okay, we're back in Tinkercad and we're back in the thing called code blocks um, where we left off from last time. But this is quite a complicated little um, little package. And I've tried to sort of stretch um, sort of limitations of, um, of code blocks, but this, um, this does give you an, an idea of what it's capable of. Um, in terms of um, in terms of making objects that you wouldn't necessarily be able to make simply by hand, and you wouldn't necessarily be able to make in um, in the standard Tinkercad. For example, I've produced this um, vase. Um, so that could be output from three D printed. Each one of these is, is one shape, but it's rotated around sixteen times and interlocks. Let me show you this running, and you can get an idea of what's happening. It's using a simple loop, um, which some of you may have come across before. Brian range loop. So I'm going to play this. So it's going to create the basic object. I'm just going to zoom in here so you can see what's happening. It creates one of these objects here, um, polygon, ten, uh, uh, with ten, ten sides. It creates a hole, slightly smaller. Puts that inside. It loops it together. Rotates it around the z-axis. Rotates it around the y-axis. Moves it into position. Through this loop of holes and start building it. And then this bit, the important bit, written orange, is for each step in frame, i.e. 16 steps, it's going to rotate around the 360 degrees. Yeah, use this using both these two variables that I've created here. What does that mean? Well, let me show you. So we're going to create a new. Yep, we're going to create a new block. Um, so Got all these different blocks, different things down here, which I showed you before. But for this first one, I'm going to create a new object and I'm going to call it. We'll stick with a 10 sided vase, but this is up to you, whatever you want to make. But we're going to stick with polygons. Um, yep, so I've got my vase in here. Well, I haven't got my vase in here because I've not created anything. Um, so first of all, let's start by creating a variable. And we're going to call this variable each variable. I'm going to call it frame. Okay. I'm going to give it a value of 16. Okay. That's how many times I want this to rotate. Okay, so the variable, the variable frame, I'm going to rotate around 16 times. I'm then going to create another variable rotating variable, so I'm going to rename it. Um, I'll call it F rotate rather than just rotate because I might want to put more than one rotate into this. So F basically stands for frame or frame rotate. I'll call it F rotate. And this is going to be a simple division. So I'm going to add something else, not just that. I could put a number in there, but I'm not. I'm going to I'm going to choose this box here. Okay, so I'm going to go down to the variables I've created, these here. I'm going to rotate. I'm going to rotate 360 degrees, so the angle's in a circle, divided by the number of steps in frame, i.e. 16. So my rotate is going to be 360 divided by frame. So if I want to make more steps in this, in this variable, it will know, and I can use these variables throughout my code. Okay. Right back in. So I'll drag that and I move it. It's not always easy, but there we go. Move it into position. Okay. But I've still not drawn anything yet. Let's start building my object. Um, any shape you want, but I'm going to stick with a polygon for now. Stick with the polygon. Um, I'm going to recolor it. It's green. And I'm going to use these steps here. It's going to be 10 sides. Yeah. Head, the edge is going to be this nothing. I'm not going to round the edge or anything. Um, the edge steps, again, is just going to be one. There's no, nothing I need to change there. Just the number of sides are going to be 10. But at the moment, if I create this, it creates a 10 sided shape. Yeah. It doesn't look like what I, what I want. Yeah. So 
created that. So let's scale this up. So find scale. Yep. Yeah. I'm going to scale it by six. Six times bigger in the x axis, six times bigger in the y axis. But I want this to be flatter. I want it to be um, sort of not as high. So I'm going to do that by a fifth. So I'm going to do that by 0 0.2. So now when I play it, yep. yeah, and it's um, made it thinner. There. So it's almost like rolling it out with a rolling pin. Now I want one to go inside this. So what I could do, go and find the polygon again, and drag that in place. Or, put that there, if I right click, and I can duplicate. So I've got this again, like so. And this time, I'm going to make this slightly smaller, half an increment, 5.5, that 5.5, and I'm going to set this as a hole. Yeah, so that one's uh, a solid object, this one is a hole. So every clear, you just got a little white circle around them. Click. Yeah, um, they're not grouped together the two separate objects. So I've got to go down to the purple section again, and create a group, and I'm going to pop that in place. So now when I play it, zip, and there we go, we've created this. So that's my first object, okay? Um, my first my frame, basically, but I want 16 of these things, um, and I want to rotate them around 360 degrees. I want to rotate them around a circle, okay? Step-by-step um, -step increments. So I'm going to use rotate, pop that in place, and first of all, I'm going to rotate around the Z axis. That's a blue one that's sticking out. Okay, rotate around the Z axis, and I'm going to rotate it around 30 degrees. Okay, Z axis 30 degrees. And then on this one, I'm going to rotate it around. You'll see, you'll see why. I'll I'm going to rotate around the um, y-axis. This time I'm going to rotate it around 50 degrees. Have a little look at that. You can see this. So flattens it out, hollows it out, rotates it up, and rotates it on an angle. Now at the moment, with that being rotated on an angle, if I move this around, you can see it's cutting through. It was sat on the work plane, but now it's cutting through the work plane, which I don't want, because if I, if I come to... 3D print this, as I mentioned before, if I come to 3D print this, it's going to chop that off. It's going to be it's going to be no good at all. It needs to be brought up. So I'm going to use move. I'm going to move it slightly um, under the x-axis. That's at minus 10. But I'm going to move it up on the z-axis. And I've, I've done a bit of trial and error with this, and I'm going to set it to 46. Um, which is just about right in terms of um, sitting on top of the work plane. So let's run that again. Yep, it's just moved it all up. Yeah, I'm doing this right. Yep, so there we go, sit on top of the work plane. This is the important bit. This is what I showed you before. This is the, we need to now um, use the repeat command and repeat. Rather than just repeating a for loop, which is how many times you want to repeat it, we're going to do it in terms of these variables. So again, we can adjust this at a later date. So for, an, for a, a while loop, it's going to repeat until it stops according to this variable. Well, what does that mean? So first of all, I'm going to just in here, where it's incremented at 10, I'm going to use this frame variable and pop that in there. So these two are talking to each other, so to speak. Yeah, so drag frame, pop it in there. Yeah. So it's going to go from one to frame, and it's going to go up It's going to, um, by one increment. It's going to go, so it's going to repeat 16 times, counting from one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to 16 this time. Um, I need to make a copy. I've created one, but I need to make a copy. Okay. So it's going to create a copy, but it's going to create a copy on top. Up, up, up. Create a copy. You can't see it because it's on top, and it's going to put them on top. Do, 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 16 times. OK, 
Okay, so there's now 16 of them all on top of each other, which is now at the top. So we need to move them around. So if I go back onto here and we need to move, yeah, so, well, we, do, we could move, but we're not going to move. We're going to rotate around. Yeah, we're going to rotate around the Z axis. Oh, my word, I am in the wrong way. Z. Yeah. Oh, my God, yeah, I think. Um, I might have just taken myself off altogether. Um, rotate around the Z axis by what? Well, we need some figures in here, but before I do that, I'm just going to put a little figure at the end here. For some reason, on this one, this needs to be filled in. So I am going to go to the green section there, and I'm just going to, just, I'm not going to change anything. I can at a later date, but I'm just going to pop that in there. Okay. Now, this bit is going to be very similar to this bit. Okay. So what does that mean? I'm going to use this one here, like so. I am going to use the for I in range, so I'm going to go, yeah, I'm going to use this as my counter, and this I'm going to multiply by the rotate. Okay, the F rotates, I'm going to rotate by that. So every time it rotates around, dividing 360 by 16, so it's going to rotate around. The answer is 22.5. So it's going to rotate around 22 and a half degrees. Okay, drag that into position again make sure it clicks into place okay so that's that it should now rotate fingers crossed press 8 off it goes roll it out hollow it out okay so I've now top yeah I've got a beautiful 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 basket like so but it's hollow at the bottom yeah so we're gonna add a, add a couple of final steps I'm just going to add, I'm going to turn it to a lampshade, I'm going to add, for the purpose of this, I'm going to add a tube. Okay. I'm going to add the tube, hopefully it'll all fit on. Come on, snap, snap. Yep. Um, Recolor it, the green which we chose. Let's look at the sizes. Oh my word. Oh my word, I can do it. Oh well, right, okay, good. So, let's bring that into place. I'm going to set the radius to, and I've measured this before, 27, which is going to be the bottom line of that. This, I'm filling this bit. So 27. The wall thickness is 18. Um, that's the how wide it is from the hole I'm creating to from here to here. You'll see, you'll, you'll, it'll, it'll become clear. So 18. The height of it only needs to be quite small. I'm going to put a height of five. And I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to leave the rest of it like so. Make sure. Once it gets to 16, it drops that little hole in there. Now, if I change the um, just to show you, if I change this to something nearer to um, to the size, I can I can alter the um, the, the aperture, the um, the rate, the um, diameter of the, of the hole inside. So I'm going to set that to 22, and then let's play again. Pops it in, as you can see, it's made a tiny little hole in there. Now, if I want to do one at any hole at, at all, there's no reason why I can't use a cylinder and just pop it in place, um, like so. Use whatever shapes you want. There's so many shapes you can use. All these shapes are the same as what you what you find in um, in the original Tinkercad. Right now, the beauty of this, I'm going to I'm going to save this as um, deck again. Like so, and I'm just going to I'm just going to grab that, um, and I'm going to copy it, and you'll see why. So I've, I've created that. And now, if I click on export, I can export that as a part. I 
part that's going to sit inside Tinkercad. So if I paste that in there, name Dragon Lounge here, here, it's going to be a solid part, pops it in, save the part, and then when I come to um, open up Tinkercad, I can use it as part of my parts menu inside Tinkercad. So that is it. I will now screenshot this so you've got it as an example. Okay, or you can simply pause it in YouTube um, and, uh, and give it a go yourself. There you go. Okay. Oh, um, this is just a final thing. Because I've created a new object, these two things aren't grouped together at the moment. So I'm just going to go back in group. Yeah. Just to finish off. To export it, if you want to export it as a, because what I can do, click on this, what I can do is I can export it as an object or an STL file, an object, which means I can print it straight to the, um, straight to the 3D printer. Okay, good luck, and I will leave you that with you, um, and I will see you next time.